So, Lent was approaching, and Father Fabio caught Francis and me in the hall and asked if we would like to help plan the le Lenten lecture series. We agreed, and he said he wanted a discussion group more than a lecture series and wanted prayer to be a big part of it. Now, realizing there were five Wednesdays for the course, Francis and I decided we needed two more planner presenters to join us and Father Fabio. My first thought was to mine EFM for willing participants, and Francis agreed. Since Francis and I are two people who are independent thinkers and who can conduct a discussion in an orderly manner despite having opposing views, I sought similar virtues in my choices. So I recruited two four-year two year four students facile with presentations, reflections, and liturgical and theological thinking in general. One was Mary Lou, whose opinion I respect even on the rare occasions on which we disagree. The other was Priscilla, whose opinion I respect even on the rare occasions on which we do agree. We all got together with Father Fabio and decided on content and format. Each week we would have a short presentation by one of the presenters, and then we would have small group discussions on the topics. Reasons for and history of Lent, wilderness experiences, Lenten experiences, pilgrimage, a faith journey, and finally, prayer. The first two went well enough, and we were gaining momentum when real meetings had to be replaced by virtual meetings, including church services. By the way, I missed significant portions of the final three parts of the program, but I hear they went well. My first reaction to the closing of the church and the switch to virtual ser services and meetings was, hey, we are Christians. Aren't we not, are we not supposed to trust in the Lord? I don't remember reading trust in the Lord except when something bad happens. My immediate counter response came directly from the first two parts of the Lenten series and was, thou shalt not put the Lord thy God to the test. And I recognized that, while there were many young people in good health likely to overcome the virus, there were many with advanced or very early age and or comorbid conditions who might not fare well, and for whom putting God to the test would be a bad idea. At this point, I knew I was in my own wilderness experience, in a serious head-to-head -head confrontation with God and dry, diving into a deep Lenten experience in which I must deeply invest myself, speak both from my head and my heart, observe life around me, and, most importantly, listen for God and to God speaking to me. But, I asked, where is God in all this disruption, confusion, and fear? And, of course, the answer is that the great I Am is, as He always is, everywhere, which and that means right here. But his voice will not be heard in the coronavirus, nor in the shouting and speeches of politicians and newscasters, nor the flurry of activity of people fighting the virus. No, his voice will be in the words and actions of the faithful, you and me, the still, quiet voice in the silence. So I looked and I listened, and I meditated. Along the way, from various sources, often combined in ways they were not intended, multiple revelations came to me. My loss of church as I knew it was as if God himself threw me into a wilderness Lenten experience, faith journey, prayer experience of my own. Were others experiencing this? Do others, like me, have a new perception of the experience of the disciples with the loss on Monday, Thursday, slash Good Friday, the absolute despair and confusion on Saturday, their Sabbath day, and the joy of resurrection of Easter Sunday as it became real to them. 
and I looked and I saw everyday people showing their best sides and working together to get through this, coming up with new ways to stay connected to God and each other, and doing it all with humor that could only come from faith and prayer. And I asked, and I ask you now, wouldn't it be wonderful if this spirit of unity, faith, and prayer could continue indefinitely? Thank you.